welcome to my playthrough of Mansions of Madness. This is the intro and setup video. Uh, and I've got the board all set up for the third scenario in the base game, which is called Blood Ties. And uh, we're going to be playing with Joe Diamond and Sister Mary. And they will be uh, going through the scenario and trying to figure out what is happening. Uncovering clues, solving mysteries, unlocking doors. So, uh, let's go over and take a look at Joe Diamond's character and Sister Mary's character. And then we'll take a look at what the Keeper has at his disposal. Do an intro of the scenario and then next video we'll get into uh, going through the first turn. Okay, so first up is going to be Joe Diamond. He has been randomly selected as the nephew of the uh, uncle that he has inherited this estate from. And we'll take a look at his card. He has a health of 12, a sanity of 8. He has skill points of 3. Uh, so that will give him uh, 3 skill tokens, as we'll see later in the game as they come up. And he, I'm going to be selecting this card. There's two of each of these cards, and you can select one of them. So he has Strength of 5, Marksmanship 6, Dexterity of 5, and it's the License to Kill card. And it says you start the game with the 45 Automatics. And so what are the 45 Automatics? Well, of course, they are a weapon. And weapons, of course, are used to shoot monsters in the game. It does 3 damage. You see the, uh, the burst mark here with the 3 in it. It's a ranged weapon. And as an action, you can attack a monster within two range. If the monster is within one range, you get plus two marksmanship. So he's starting the game with that weapon and those stats. And he's starting, uh, you see other statistics here. Intellect is six, willpower five, lore three, luck three. And it's the lucky break card for him. It says action once per game, choose a monster in your space and test your luck. Uh, if you pass, you kill the monster. So it might be a good way to take out some really, really big nasty monster. And our second character in the game, and I should show you the miniature. So this is uh, Joe Diamond in his uh, action pose. 45's out front, um, cape uh, or trench coat flapping behind him, ready to shoot down whatever gets in his way. And I'll just show you Sister Mary before we get into her cards. This is the Sister Mary miniature. Very nicely done. Fantasy Flight Games always uh, uh, outdoes themselves with miniatures and production values. But you know that if you've bought any uh, Fantasy Flight Games. And the tiles and cards in this game are also extremely nice. So here we have Sister Mary. She has a health of 8, sanity of 12, and skill points of 3. Now, we'll take a look at her stat cards. First up is the Strength. She is not very strong. Strength of 2, Marksmanship 2, Dexterity of 6, and she has the Hand of the Father. You start the game with the Holy Water starting card. Well, what is the Holy Water, you ask? Well, here it is. Here is Holy Water, and it's an equipment, and it's an action. You can choose a monster within one range and test your luck plus one. If you pass, you deal one damage and stun the monster. So, she's pretty good at uh, tossing Holy Water on monsters. And she has uh, her other stack card, Intellect 3, Willpower 7, Lore 5, Luck of 4. And as an action, Holy Warding, it says once per game, choose a monster in your room, you may move it up to three spaces. So she can basically uh, tell monsters where to go. All right, let's go over and look at the Keeper uh, uh, stuff to start the game. And I'll explain a little bit about that. Okay, so here, uh, just to look at the board, I have the Keeper information. This card is the uh, actual objective of the game. This is the back side of it. Of course, the other side has the real objective on it. Uh, and that is chosen through a series of questions at the beginning of uh, the scenario. Each scenario has three outcomes uh, that you can pick. And there's five scenarios in the base game. So that's a total, obviously, of 15 different outcomes. And I just have the what I had chosen uh, put here. And just off to the side here, I have the uh, timing cards, I guess we'll call them. And they uh, get timer tokens put on at the end of every turn. And the number at the bottom there is how many timer tokens go on it. And then once you get that number of timing tokens put on the card, it flips over and there will be some kind of event. Usually not a good one. We have here Mythos cards, uh, which can... Uh, do effects to characters if they take damage or sanity loss. We have trauma cards, 
uh, I'm sorry, these are the ones that if you take sanity and health loss, you can play trauma cards and mythos cards are can be played during the character's movement turn or just during their turn at specific times. And we start off the keeper having two mythos cards. I'm not going to show you what they are. I'll keep them a secret and one trauma card. I also get two threat tokens. And threat tokens are used to activate abilities. And there are five abilities we start this one with. One is raise dead. And you can perform one of the following actions. And this can be done as many times as threat tokens you have to spend. If you pay one threat token, you can put a corpse in the graveyard or the crypt, which we do have in the scenario. And if you pay two threat tokens, you can discard a cor corpse marker and place a zombie in its place. So that's good. Evil Presence lets you spend one threat token and uh, draw one Mythos card, one Trauma card. You can do that as many times as you have threat. Pyromaniac lets you place a fire token in a spot that has a campfire or adjacent to a room that's already on fire. And now, and that can be used as many times as you can spend threat for on your turn. Creature of the Night uh, you spend one threat token and it'll allow, move every monster up to one space. You may then move a beast monster an additional space. And we have take sample which costs one threat. And it says once per turn, so this can only be used once per turn. You choose a monster in an investigator's space and you place a sample marker on the monster and move it one space. And if the monster is at the altar space at the start of your turn, which would be the keeper's turn, place the token on the altar and gain five threat. And just up here we have the uh, humanoid uh, attack deck, the beast monster deck, and the sort of tentaclead uh, cthulhu -y monster uh, attack deck. So these are used for combat, and we'll get into that as we play the game. Okay, we'll go back to the board. We'll set the stage, and the next time we will begin. And I will go through the turn order and the rules and stuff as we play through the game, so I won't explain too much of it right now. But we'll get over to the board and we'll introduce the scenario. Okay, so here we have Joe Diamond, Sister Mary, and they're by the campfire. So how did they get there, you ask? Well, let's look at the story so far. It says, you stand there in the pouring rain, watching your Uncle Artemis's grave fill with water. You remember him vividly from your youth, mostly as the intelligent center of attention during the holidays. One particular Christmas stands out, the only time in your life you had a personal conversation with him. Until this moment, you had completely forgotten about this encounter. We're a special family, you know that, right? He picked up his pipe and struck a match across his stubbled chin. You sat attentively as he took a few puffs. There is much more to life than what they teach you in school, and our family has a long history of expanding our horizons. Your parents, though, they're going to try and shelter you, keep you from the truth. I don't understand. I don't understand, you replied, your eyebrows knit together. Oh, someday you will. And when that day arrives, arrives come and see me. He patted you on the back and walked away. That day never came. And now it's too late to ask him. In the years that followed, he drew distant from the family. He had no spouse or children of his own, apparently by choice. Some sort of quarrel had made him an outcast from the family, though he had been careful to stay away from drama. As they lower his coffin into the ground, you can't help but wonder why he left you his entire estate. You tell yourself it's because he didn't trust the rest of the family. But a cold feeling tells you that the truth is much bleaker. Hours later, you travel through the driving rain to your new estate, which you quickly discover is a misnomer. The grounds are dotted with a few half-built structures in the middle of nowhere. Apparently, your eccentric uncle had either run out of time or money to finish constructing his home. As the rain lets up and dusk approaches, you start a fire to dry off and warm yourself. You do a quick tour of the grounds before returning to sulk by the fire. If there was anything of worth here, it was cleverly hidden. As you stare into the flames, you realize that inheritance is not what it is cracked up to be. And then, the prologue. You start to nod off around the fire, dreams of riches and luxury floating through your mind. You bolt upright as a terrifying scream awakens you. You reorient yourself. The scream was from nearby, to the northeast, you think. You muster up your courage and go to investigate. All right, so that sets the stage for the scenario Blood Ties. Uh, so Joe Diamond here by the fire with Sister Mary. There's some blood-curdling scream from up here somewhere. And when we come back, uh, we will begin turn one. And a turn basically consists of the investigators uh, going and then the keeper going. Uh, and that will be a complete turn. So join me next time. We'll start going through the rules. Oh, and I will say that there, you know, it will be a bit of a spoiler uh, if you've not played the Blood Ties uh, scenario. 
However, this game has been out now for, oh boy, three years. So it's unlikely it's going to be spoiled. But anyway, let's see if Sister Mary and Joe Diamond can figure out what's going on with Joe's uncle uh, at the strange estate. So join me next time for turn one. Thanks for watching.